Alleluia! 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 Let the holy anthem rise And the choirs of heaven chanted In the temple of the skies Let the mountains skip with gladness And the joyful valleys ring With hosannas in the highest To our Savior and our King Alleluia, Alleluia Like the sun from out the wave He has risen up in triumph From the darkness of the grave He's the splendor of the nations He's the lamp of endless days He's the very Lord of glory Who is risen up today Alleluia, Alleluia Blessed Jesus make us rise From the life of this corruption the life that never dies May your glory be our portion When the days of time are past And the dead shall be awakened By the trumpet's mighty blast Alleluia! 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 Let the holy anthem rise and the choirs of heaven chanted In the temple of the skies Let the mountains skip with gladness And the joyful valleys ring With hosannas in the highest To our Savior and our King People of God, good morning. We gather together this morning on the Feast of Pentecost in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Light, grace, and peace be with you all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The older I get, the more I realize that everything is really connected. And certainly as we gather together on the Feast of Pentecost, that is intricately linked to baptism. We're always reminding you that you're baptized when you bless yourself with holy water, when, uh, when you wear a white garment on your wedding day. Um, we're always letting you know that you're a part of God's family. And so it's appropriate today to bless this water and remind ourselves in this sprinkling rite that we are all, as baptized Christians, members of this great and holy family. So reach out your hands, everyone, as we ask God to bless this water today. Lord, our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers. And for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption, graciously bless this water. May this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our sisters and brothers who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Come <coughs> to the water, come to the water of life. It will never run dry. Come to the water, come to the water of life. It will never run dry. Come to the water, run to the water of life. It will never run dry. Let justice roll like a river Oh, let mercy flow with love Love, come to the water Come to the water of life It will never run dry Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. 
we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will lord jesus christ only god and son lord god lamb of god son of the father you take away the sins of the world have mercy on us, you take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us, glory to God in the highest and on earth. Of good will. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as of fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear them in our native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Frisia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and districts of Libya near Cyrene as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, yet we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty works of God. The word of the Lord.
Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. I praise you, Lord God, with all my heart. You are glorious and majestic, our Lord. By your wisdom you made so many things. The whole earth is covered with your living creatures. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You created all of them by your spirit and you give new life to the earth. To the earth, our Lord, we pray that your glory Send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading. From the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God, who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all of the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, sing alleluia, by your spirit. Your word is revealed. Open our hearts, Lord, to hear your word. Alleluia. Sing Alleluia. Open our hearts, Lord, to hear your word. Alleluia, sing alleluia. The Lord be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side and the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. 
as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Open our hearts, Lord, to hear your word. Alleluia. Sing alleluia. In New York City, there is a famous French baker by the name of Dominic Ansel. He has a fancy patisserie in uh, in Soho. He is famous primarily and perhaps exclusively because some years ago he uh, devised or created a pastry that he decided is a hybrid between an American donut and a French croissant. If you say it like that, people think you're French. (laughs) And they try to kiss you. (laughs) He calls this um, confection a cronut. And I cannot tell you, everybody, the sensation this created when he released this pastry. It was It was unbelievable. It was written about in the New York Times, in New York Magazine. It was on Good Morning America, Bon Appetit. Everybody was writing about this pastry. And there were stories about how people were waiting, lines around the block of this bakery. People waiting two and three hours in the rain to get one of these cronuts, okay? And sometimes there were stories about people who would be waiting for several hours and they would put a sign out that said, We have no more cronuts. The suffering was real. (laughs) So on one of my trips to New York, I decided that I wanted to try one. Now, if I was telling my father this story, he would have thought that you could just walk up to a bakery and you could get this pastry, like you could go to Slow Donuts and order a, a dozen donuts. No, 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 no. At Dominic Ensel, this is a commitment of time and money. Okay, so on the day that I went with a friend of mine, we waited in line for 45 minutes just to place our order. That's not them handing you the food. That's just waiting to get to the counter to order your food. So we ordered two egg sandwiches, two cronuts, a couple of pastries, a coffee, and a tea. And the bill was akin to a mortgage payment. Okay, all right. I I think, it's been a long time, but I think that cronut, just one, I think it was $25, okay, for that. Right. So once you've ordered the food, the next hurdle is actually finding a place to sit because it's a tiny cafe and, and you would like to be able to sit down while you eat your, your expensive breakfast. So you're standing there and you're waiting for someone to leave so that you can nab the table and sit down. So finally we get a table and here comes the breakfast. Oh, the cronut. So I have to tell you, everybody, that egg sandwich was one of the most delicious things that I have ever eaten in my entire life. It was really tiny. I could have eaten three of them. It was a freshly baked brioche bun, warm from the oven. And the egg mixture inside was eggs and cream and butter and cheese and fresh herbs. Oy! Oh, I will never forget that sandwich. I think about it all the time, especially when I'm sad and alone. But the cronut, not so much. You know, I thought it was going to be light and flaky, like French pastry. You know, like, you know, when you eat a piece of, of French pastry or even a glazed donut, you know, it's so light that it almost disappears on your tongue. This was heavy and dense and kind of gluten-like, you know. I felt like I took a bite and it was like thud onto my system. So 
my friend and I, we had gotten two of them and we had split this first one and neither one of us wanted the other one. So what do we do? What do we do with this other pastry? I mean, it costs $25. You're not going to just leave it on the table or God forbid, throw it in the garbage. So I thought, I'll just take it with me and I'll figure it out. So I asked for a box. Now, at Dominic Ansel, they don't just give you a pastry box. No, 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 no. This is a special, highly decorated, super vellumed piece of cardboard, okay, that you place the pastry inside and the four sides fold up and interlock in such a way that it looks like a flower. So there I am walking down the streets of Manhattan with this flower box in my hand thinking, I don't want to carry this thing all day long and I don't want to eat it. What am I going to do with this, right? And so I'm looking around. I'm trying to think what to do. I'm sort of looking this way and that way and I'm thinking about it. <clears throat> and at one point I come across this gentleman who's leaning up against this signpost who appears to be homeless. So I walk up to him and I say, good morning. He eyes me warily. And I said, by any chance, would you like to have a donut this morning? And he says, oh man, I love donuts. I love donuts and I'm so hungry. I'd love a donut today. And I said, well, here you go, brother. Here's a $25 cronut. <laughs> With my compliments. As I walked away, everybody, you would have thought that I had given this guy the keys to a beach house. I mean, he, he's marveling at this box and the construction of it and admiring it. And, and, and before I turned the corner, he'd figured out how to release it so that it sprung open. And the joy on his face looking at this pastry was just unforgettable. It's such a great New York story. But it's not a story about generosity. It's not a story about me giving something to somebody because it wasn't even something that I particularly wanted. This is a story about the quest to use what you have, to, to bestow upon others the gift that you possess. Today the church is celebrating the Feast of Pentecost. In the weeks leading up to this weekend, we have been hearing Jesus talk about the fact that when he leaves, that he is going to not leave us orphaned, but that he will give to us an advocate, and that that advocate is going to empower his disciples. So what we celebrate today is that there was this moment in history in which this energy from God actually came down from the sky and descended upon the disciples and infiltrated them. This, this orb of light and energy that was described as tongues of fire. And when it infiltrated the disciples, they were given these amazing gifts. They could heal the sick. They could speak different languages. They could cast out demons. They could do all these remarkable things. Now, in the aftermath of this event and over the centuries, the church took time to really analyze and find a theology to describe what happened. And what they determined is that this energy that came down from the sky is to be defined as the Holy Spirit. What is that? We would say, here's God, here's Jesus. And the relationship between them is so strong and so tangible and so filled with love that it actually creates a third entity. And that's the spirit of God. And what we believe is that when you are baptized, that spirit is poured into you. And that once it is within you and when it is nurtured, that there are gifts that come to you through the Spirit. And some of you, if you hold on to your catechism, will remember just exactly what those gifts are. We use this with our confirmation class. You're given the gifts of wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, and fear of the Lord. Now, do you understand what that means, fear of the Lord? This is a, a, a way of saying that we have reverence for God, that we respect God, that we acknowledge the immensity of God's presence. All of these gifts are within us, but there's more. What the church says is that when you use these gifts, and they take a different form in every different person, when you use these gifts, they have the ability to compound. They actually bear fruit, and the church calls them the fruits of the Spirit. And the fruits of the Spirit are love 
and joy and peace and patience and kindness and generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Do you understand that, that when you actually identify the gifts that you've been given and you use them, that they, they compound, they expand, that there's more positive energy that begins to move through the world. But in order for any of that energy to happen, you need to look within and you need to use the gifts that you have. Not to just sit back and say, well, you know, if the opportunity presents itself, I'll be more than happy to serve. No, 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 no. That you are actually looking around to see how you can use the gifts that you've been given. Just like I'm looking around on the streets of New York for someone to bestow that, that pastry on, right? That you're looking around to find a way to use the gift because what good is a gift if you don't use it? Why have money if you're not going to spend it? Why have clothes if you're not going to wear them? Why have food if you're not going to eat it? Everything that we've been given by God has been meant to be used so that it can multiply and create more positive energy. So on this Pentecost Sunday, it's important for each and every one of us to look inside and to identify the gifts that God has given you and to use them. Because whatever God gave you, whatever you've got, believe me, boys and girls, there's somebody out there who's hungry for it. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The human family is indeed gathered in one place, right here, right now. Let us be better listeners then, for in every act of kindness, compassion, forgiveness, and understanding, the Holy Spirit is speaking the language of God all over the world. That we might listen for this life-giving energy moved around by love and come to know that through it, we are one. We pray to the Lord. for peace in the world, for unity everywhere there is religious intolerance, division, and heartbreak. We pray that the healing power of the Holy Spirit might help us to understand and bear with one another, that we might be more open, more welcoming, more tolerant and forgiving. We pray to the Lord. that this year's graduates might be filled with hope and excitement for their futures, that they might find their gifts and use them well. We pray to the Lord. For all those who celebrate the gift of life in a special way today, for Krista Rose Maharas, that she and all those who celebrate their birthday might be filled with good health and great good humor. We pray to the Lord. For the homeless, the hungry, those in need of work or even clothing or shoes, that they might meet someone today filled by the Spirit, someone who shares with them their spiritual riches that we all need 
in order to feel seen and loved and connected. We pray to the Lord. For the sick, the suffering, and the dying, for all those in need of God's healing grace, I invite you at this time to say their names aloud. Philip, John, Joan, Sandy, Mike, Sue. That through the healing power of the Holy Spirit, May all those who are ill be brought to the fullness of health and well-being. We pray to the Lord. For all the faithful departed, our parents, our children, our spouses, our beloved friends, may all those that we have loved and lost rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. Lord God, may the gifts that we have been given so lavishly by you be used each and every day to create a world that is peaceful, safe, and holy through Christ our Lord. Amen. As our gifts are being prepared for the altar, I invite you to join us as we sing together, Come Holy Spirit, Come. Called by the gospel to gather this people of God. Called to embrace all communities here into one. Broken and bonded by pains of the past. Striving to fashion a love that will last. We'll call on the Spirit of God to open our hearts. Come, Spirit of wisdom and light. Come, Spirit of consolation. Come, Spirit of strength, fire of love. Come, bathe our darkness in light. Come, Reveal what will liberate us, make of us one. Come, Holy Spirit, Spirit of wisdom and light, come, Spirit of consolation, come, Spirit of strength, fire of love, come, bathe our darkness in light, come, reveal what will liberate us, make of us fun, come, Holy Spirit, come. We open our hands, prepare to receive. We open our hearts, for we believe. Come, Spirit of wisdom and light, come. Spirit of consolation, come, 
Spirit of strength, fire of love. Come, bathe our darkness in light. Come, that liberate us, make of us one. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, come, Spirit of wisdom and light. Come, Spirit of consolation. Come, Spirit of strength, fire of love. Come, bathe our darkness in light. Come. Reveal what will liberate us, make of us one. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Make of us one. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always, everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for bringing your Paschal mystery to completion, you bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting us to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the church became in birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of faith. Therefore, Overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest Hosanna in the highest You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It will be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of this death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray 
that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Danny, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her beloved spouse, all the saints and apostles who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. May the peace of the Lord be with all of you. Thank you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Peace be with Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. If today you are a guest in the Catholic Church or if there is any other reason why you are not receiving communion, we'd like to invite you to come forward with us and receive a blessing. The way you do that is to cross your hands over your heart and when you receive that blessing, reply, Amen. 
Let's continue in our worship together by singing the Supper of the Lamb. Blessed are those invited to the Supper of the Lamb. Blessed are those invited to the Supper of the Lamb. Let us come, the worn and weary, to the feast prepared by Christ the Lord. Blessed are those invited to the supper of the Lamb. Let us come, the meek and mighty, to the feast prepared by Christ the Lord. Blessed are those invited to the supper of the Lamb. Let us come, the lost and lonely, to the feast prepared by Christ the Lord. Blessed are those invited to the supper of the Lamb. Let us come, the frail and fallen, to the feast prepared by Christ the Lord. Blessed are those in Invited to the supper of the Lamb. Let us come, the glad and grateful, to the feast prepared by Christ the Lord. Blessed are those invited the supper of the Breaking of the bread, we knew him, Lord Jesus. Alleluia, Alleluia. Were not our hearts burning as he spoke? Not our hearts yearning for the word of God in the breaking of the bread we knew him Lord Jesus Alleluia Alleluia your hand here see the place of nails blessed are those who have not seen but believe in the breaking of the bread we knew him lord jesus 
Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Risen is Christ, Shepherd who died for His flock. In the breaking of the bread, we knew Him, Lord Jesus. Alleluia, Alleluia. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain all its force, and that this spiritual food may gain her abundance of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In two weeks, uh, the church will be celebrating the Feast of Corpus Christi, the Feast of the Body and Blood of Jesus. Um, normally, I would, I would take that opportunity to uh, talk a little bit about communion and going to communion as a sort of a reminder, but, um, but I, I won't be here that weekend. So uh, I'm gonna take today's opportunity to, to talk to you a little bit about it. Um, just a few things. First of all, everybody, I know it, you probably find it tiresome to have Deacon Tom remind you to turn off your telephones, uh, your cell phones, but I found that when that announcement isn't made, that we're interrupted more frequently with them going off. Um, and that's not just true for church, but when you're at a, a theater or um, a concert or something, if they, if they make the time to make the announcement, it seems like people check, and by and large, then we, we minimize the disruption of that. Um, the, the other thing, when it, when it comes to communion, um, let me just begin by saying that when we are receiving the Eucharist, and, and there, of course, is the host, and then there is the cup, and you have the option of receiving um, either one or both, whatever, whatever you choose. But whenever you are approaching the sacrament, it's appropriate to make a sign of reverence, whether that's just a, a, a nod of your head or even a solemn, solemn bow, but some acknowledge of reverence. And when the Eucharistic minister says to you, body of Christ or blood of Christ, that you are expected to respond to that by saying amen. Um, I know some of you probably think, well, well, what else? But some people just walk up, you know, hand it over. So, um, you know, it, it, it's important to make that sign of reverence as, a, as a, a reminder to yourself even about the significance about what you are about to receive. And then when the, when the Eucharistic minister says blood of Christ or body of Christ, that you are acknowledging that by saying amen, I believe. Um, we remain standing, everybody, because of the concept of the meal and that when we, when we dine together, we don't just, just feed ourselves and then walk out of the room, but rather that we, we stand together in solidarity while everyone is receiving and then we are seated together. Now, now in the past, in, 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 the, in the past, people would go to communion and then they would go kneel down and they would have their private prayer time. And, and there are still people sometimes that want that reinstated, but you need to understand fundamentally this is not a private prayer time. This is a communal prayer experience. So we are always conscious of the fact that we're together as the living body of Christ. And so we wait for everyone to either be blessed or receive Eucharist. And then we all sit together and we have that, that quiet time. The other thing I want to mention to you is that, um, 
is my hope is always that you will come to mass on time that you will that you will make an effort to be here on time and and to be here for the entirety of the liturgy there there seems to be um i don't know what to call it a wives tale or sort of a legend i remember my mother talking about it when i was a child that as long as you made it by the time of the gospel that you had fulfilled your obligation you know or once i've gone to communion i can go because you know I've, there's a brunch um maybe a cronut. And so um, basically everybody, um, whoever came up with that idea, I think they're burning in hell, okay? <laughs> so it, it, that's, it, that's in none of the books, okay? That's in none of the, that every part of the liturgy is important. Every part of it is significant. And no one part can be missed because that's not really the, the heart and soul of it, but rather every single thing that we're doing. And just out of respect, just out of respect for the people who have made time to get here um, and time. Now I realize that sometimes there are things that are out of our control and, and we, you know, it, we, there's exceptions always. But in general, General, it would mean a lot if we could always try to make the effort to get here on time. If that's not motivating you, here's another motivating factor. I always say, if you're like crawling over people and, you know, trying to get a seat and everybody's staring and looking at you, there's always the danger that they're looking at you and they're thinking, wow, has he gained weight? So you <laughs> don't want that to happen, okay? Don't take the risk, okay? <laughs> don't risk it. Get here on time. Also, of course, my dream and my hope is that, you know, all the other things like going to the restroom and all that, hopefully that could happen before, um, you know, and not, not during. I'd like to minimize as much of the movement back and forth. Um, you know, I obviously, when I preach, I preach without notes, but that doesn't mean that, that I'm a drone. You know, I, I was preaching here recently and someone actually was coming back from the bathroom and literally walked right in front of me while I was preaching. And, you know, my mind goes blank in those moments. So, you know, if, if in fact you have to leave, then maybe you could wait in the back until such a time as we're all standing and then you could slip back into place. I, um, I always remember this story that I tell when I was a young priest in Salinas and there was this gentleman who would always come in while I was preaching. I would he'd be in the middle of preaching and he would walk down the aisle and he wouldn't just sit in the back, he would, he would walk all the way to the front and the whole time he was coming in, he was like waving at people and you know gesturing and <laughs> call me, you know, this kind of thing. So I finally uh, worked up the courage to say something to him and I said, you know, um, if, if you can't make it here on time, maybe you could sit toward the rear and I'll never forget it. Um, he looked at me and he said, you're lucky I'm here at all. <laughs> Guess where he's going. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think sometimes we, we can lose sight of the the sacredness of what we're doing here. And so I, I just encourage us all to, to, as a reminder of who we are and what we're doing um, when we celebrate the Eucharist because this is, um, this is the center of who we are as Catholics. Um, I want to welcome Father Mike uh, to be with us today. It's always a pleasure to have the prodigal son here at uh, Nativity of Our Lady. We have refreshments for you, everybody, if you'd like to come in and have a little something to eat and drink before you head off on your busy Sunday, and uh, I hope that all of you have a great Memorial Day. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has ended. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord and one another. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Oh, happy day. 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 When Jesus was. When Jesus was. When Jesus washed, He washed my sins away. Oh, yes, He did. He taught me how to watch, fight, and pray. Fight and Pray and live rejoicing. 
Every day Every day That's why I say oh happy day Oh happy day Oh happy day Oh happy day Oh happy day